November 5th, 2013, Pulitzer Prize winner Lawrence Wright released his book, Going Clear, Scientology, Hollywood, and the Prison of Belief. The Church of Scientology did not react well to this book, nor did it cooperate. Instead, it, it had put up a website attacking Lawrence Wright, claiming that he made factual errors, when in fact this is one of the best checked books in literary history, perhaps, because he was writing about the Church of Scientology. Something I wanted to talk about to remind our listeners of is the Atlantic Advertorial. The Atlantic is a very highbrow literary magazine that's been around for a long time. A lot of famous American writers that first appeared in this magazine, or after they came to fame. One of the problems that Larry Wright's book created for David Miscavige it contributed to the perception that he was a tyrant, he was physically abusive, maniacal, and he was a religious dictator. The church did not like the details and facts that Lawrence Wright conveyed in his book. On January 13, 2013, the New York Times gave uh, Lawrence Wright's book a very favorable review. The Church of Scientology had advanced knowledge of this very favorable review. Therefore, the next day, January 14, 2013, they posted this ad in the Atlantic Magazine. And here's where the trouble began, and so many of you were following this along with me on Tony Ortega's Underground Bunker. This was called an advertorial. And what that means is it's purposely designed to be somewhat misleading. It's designed to look like magazine content, when it's actually an ad. And normally when you read a magazine, for those of you who read print still, an ad looks like an ad. It doesn't look like journalism. But the Atlantic took money from the Church of Scientology and, and put in really a self-serving piece that looked right out of North Korean propaganda. It was a tribute to David Miscavige. And the internet immediately called shenanigans on it and uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it was misleading. Two, the comments were controlled by the Church of Scientology. The comments were all favorable. I didn't know this church had so many churches. I'll have to go visit. It looks good. Respect. Thumbs up. All good. And uh, <clears throat> it was funny to watch it because uh, immediately the, the Atlantic is pillaged online. Gawker, Salon, Slate, Huff, Huffington Post, everyone piles on the Atlantic for doing this. Within 24 hours, the ad is down. And what the Church of Scientology doesn't understand, even if it has 1.5 billion, you can't buy a new reputation. If you're Imelda Marcos, if you're Saddam Hussein, if you're David Miscavige, you cannot buy a new reputation, and you can't force people to accept the fact that you're good when you're not. The way you get a good reputation is you earn it by decent behavior. And this is something the Church of Scientology will not and cannot do. It will not change. It would rather try to be glib. It would rather try to advertise. Uh, a couple things that are striking. When PR fails, the Office of Special Affairs has to go to intelligence. They try to get dirt on their enemies. And when that fails, they go legal. And there's several letters which I'll post in the video companion to this piece. Two letters of interest are the threat letter that uh, Jeffrey K. Riffer, David Miscavige's attorney, wrote to Mr. Graydon Carter of Vanity Fair. No less uh, literary eminence than Graydon Carter himself threatening Vanity Fair, Maureen North, and The New Yorker if they went with a story that painted David Miscavige in less than a favorable light. These letters are outstanding source documents to show the mentality of David Miscavige and the church. And I wanted to read from this letter from Mr. Riffer to Mr. Graydon Carter. The conclusion, he says, the disgraceful allegations Vanity Fair apparently planned to publish about Mr. Miscavige are defamatory. If Vanity Fair goes forward with publication of such defamatory allegations, now that it is on notice that the story is false, the stain on its reputation will last long after any reader even remembers the article. The sting of the jury verdict will last far longer still, far longer than any pleasure from racing to publish a poorly researched and sourced story. The remarkable language continues on the next page. 
where Mr. Riffer says, quote, there is no need to rush to publish the scurrilous allegations at issue here. This is not a story about national security, physical safety, or hot news. It is a story based on fictions manufactured by unsavory individuals who wish to do Scientology and Mr. Miscavige harm. Accordingly, we trust that Vanity Fair will not publish anything defamatory about Mr. Miscavige and that we will not need to meet at deposition or in court. Very truly yours, Jeffrey K. Riffer. Unquote. This threat was never carried through. And if there really was scurrilous defamatory material, I ask, why didn't David Miscavige sue Graydon Carter, Vanity Fair, or Marine Orth? Because he can't. There's a term in law called unclean hands. David Miscavige has unclean hands. He can't afford to be deposed in any lawsuit. Because any lawsuit in which he's deposed would tend to show that he runs the Church of Scientology, that it is his alter ego, that he is the managing agent of the Church of Scientology International and the Office of Special Affairs. This would pierce the corporate veil. Essentially, David Miscavige is in the same corner as L. Ron Hubbard was. He's the managing agent of a business. And it's not a good place to be in, in an internet world. And despite the Church of Scientology's self-serving PR efforts to glorify Mr. Miscavige as an ecclesiastical leader, we're not buying it. No one out here, Mr. Miscavige, is buying it. Uh, this is why the Church of Scientology is called a cult of personality. It, it is constellated around David Miscavige. It's becoming more like North Korea. And when Mike Rinder speaks of David Miscavige as dear leader, is very much that's how he's treated in the church as um, a dictator that has to be appeased, has to be praised, because his uh, fragile ego apparently demands endless acclamation. I don't understand why a true spiritual leader would need praise. Uh, generally, true spiritual leaders are characterized by humility, service, and they would put others before themselves. This is not the case, and this is what sets uh, David Miscavige apart as a cult leader. That's why he's correctly called a cult leader or a cult dictator. We discussed in another video how church attorneys use threats against journalists to try to control David Miscavige's public relations. In the letter uh, I mentioned previously with Graydon Carter, which is scrolling by on the screen, Miscavige makes use of 26 ideal orgs that he's built during that time period, as if buildings, the mere purchasing of buildings or the building of a, a real estate portfolio is, an, is a acceptable substitute for correct and good conduct that benefits others. The purchasing and accumulation of buildings is just an accumulation of mess, as Scientologists would call it. To have a vast fortune and purchase real estate doesn't make you spiritual. It simply means you have a real estate portfolio. That's all it means. A real estate portfolio will not feed starving children. It will not educate people. A real estate portfolio won't do anything except either go up in value or go down in value, but it has nothing to do with spiritual salvation, spiritual enlightenment, or even social betterment, as the church likes to claim.